So my name is uh, Jackie Sanchez. I am the senior human resource business partner for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island. We are one of the largest health insurance in Rhode Island, um, and there's a lot of careers at Blue Cross of Rhode Island, right? So even though we do provide the insurance, we're there for the well-being of all of our members. Um, so what we do there, so a little bit of what we do, there's many divisions, many departments, um, anywhere from um, you know, our case management, so our nurses, to HR, to our finance operations, to our data and analytics, um, to our sales department, to our marketing, to our communication department. Um, so there's a lot of things um, that people can certainly do at a health insurance um, that we are all sort of, you know, striving to meet that goal of being able to provide the best um, service to our members. So what are you looking for in new employees? What kind of education or career field skills and also what kind of soft skills? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, you know, for new employees, um, there's many, like I mentioned, there's many career fields that new associates can go into at Blue Cross. Um, you know, I'll talk a little bit of what um, I know sort of in supporting the CFO, right? So um, the CFO right now has obviously financial operations. Um, under him, there's also information technology, there's data and analytics. Um, so our, our IT department is very small. We do outsource a lot of that service. But um, what we're doing now is, you know, Blue Cross um, is going into this digital transformation world, right? So for a new employee to come into that world or to come into the data and analytics, um, they really need to kind of understand um, some of the skills that are needed now. So um, from what I hear, right, because I'm not an expert on that, but from my, what I hear from the leaders is they really need to know about cloud integration, they need to know about um, Python, they need to know about R, um, so all of those systems and all of those, um, you know, softwares and, and everything else that is needed, um, that's what they kind of need to know going into that field, right? Now, there's a lot of other fields that we, we can certainly go into, um, like actuary, underwriting, um, like I said, sales and marketing, um, our customer service department, right? Um, but I think um, aside from the specific skills that they'll need to for whatever department they're trying to go into or whatever career they're trying to go into, you know, a lot of the soft skills that folks really need is to be able to communicate with each other. Um, we are a very collaborative environment, so we need to ensure that, you know, you can certainly work with um, other folks in other departments, other divisions, um, you know, make sure that you're accountable, right? Make sure you're accountable for your own work. Um, make sure you're accountable for what you're doing. And also, um, you know, be respectful. Um, we want everyone at all levels in the organization to be respectful of each other. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, um, where in the organization you are at. Um, really, if you treat people with respect, you'll get respect back. And um, really just also, someone who can hold or uphold our ethical standards, right? Um, we are a health insurance, so we are kind of monitored a lot by um, CMS and, um, you know, so we have to make sure that everything ethically is correct, um, that there isn't any issues. So, you know, being able to make those decisions is definitely very important for us. Thank you very much. Uh, what is the job outlook for entry-level employees across BCBS over the next year, as far as you can tell, given the current pandemic situation? Yeah, so, you know, when I saw the, the question, um, it was really interesting um, to kind of think about it. And really, my answer to that is I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell um, what what that's going to look like. Um, but really thinking about um, really thinking about the experience and the area that I support, I think that what we're going to 
really go after more, what we're going to be looking at more is more of a data scientist, right? So those folks that can really sort of um, run the data, look at it, identify what the issues are and really make a story of it, right? And be able to tell that story because sometimes, sometimes that's hard, right? So sometimes when um, there is a data analyst or a data scientist, right? It's kind of like, you know, they can run the data but not be able to tell the story to someone who really understands it, right? So for example, myself, if somebody runs the data and they go over exactly what it means, you know, I, I, I may need a little bit, a different communication, you know, half the person be able to tell me it in a, in a way that I understand because I'm not in the day-to-day -day type of um, work that they're doing, right? So I think, you know, for looking ahead and really looking at my area that I support, I think a data scientist might be good um, to kind of start thinking about, you know, what it actually means and what other skills that they need to, to, to make it into that sort of field, so. Thanks, that's perfectly understandable. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of unknowns right now. Yeah, definitely a lot of unknowns. Um, that's right. Well, I mean, and, and I mean, the insurance industry is definitely one that's always needed, but um, just what we all do and how we all do it is just changing so much. Yes, yeah, and and that's one of the areas that's really changing. So our data and analytics, right? We don't, we just hired our first data scientist, right? And so from what I keep hearing is that that's really what we're going to be needing in the future. Um, but whether that's an entry level or whether that's sort of like a more senior person, because we don't really have a lot of that right now, you know, that's all going to depend as to exactly what the type of work that they're going to be doing, what they're going to be responsible for. So it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to tell right now. Uh, with all that said, though, I mean, there, there's the possibility of, of, of new jobs that we haven't even thought of yet. So that, that's promising as well. But, yeah. All right. So but speaking of your own experience, uh, what were your early experiences in this field? Uh, did you do internships? What early, early jobs did you have? How did you get to where you are now? Sure. Um, so I didn't necessarily do an internship in HR. Um, I, what I ended up doing was something that I just kind of needed to take on, right? I think I just needed that for credit. And it was a paid internship and I really needed a paid internship. <laughs> so um, I took it on. So I didn't do an HR internship, which I think was a little hard for me to get into the field um, of HR because I think HR in general is sort of, you need to be able to do an internship and it, in order to get some sort of experience to be able to even go for a, an entry level position for HR. It's, it's definitely a field that's hard to get into. Um, I would say. Um, what I, so I started at Blue Cross as a customer service rep. Um, and what ended up happening is that, you know, the, the AVP at the time um, kind of knew that I was interested. I had interviewed him for one of my classes when I was in school. And then he, find out, he found out that I was, you know, hired as a customer service rep. So he knew that I was there, he knew that I was interested. And an opportunity came up in HR where there was a job rotation program that was being launched and they wanted to pilot the, um, the job rotation program. And, you know, it was sort of tapped in the shoulder to say, hey, do you want to, do you want to put your name here? Do you want to participate, you know, um, go through the interview process and see if this is something for you, see if you kind of do a match or whatever. It ended up working out. So I ended up starting at the job rotation and um, it just so happened that a few months later, somebody ended up leaving in HR. So, you know, I was offered the position as an HR coordinator at the time, um, doing a lot of the systems that we had, um, a lot of our, you know, trainings, um, putting them into the system, um, doing some of the agency temps, um, doing some workflows. And so from there, I, I think it just sort of grew, right? So I was the HR coordinator, then I went to an HR assistant, then I did the, um, then I moved into an associate um, human resource business partner. And then that's sort of where I stayed, um, you know, as a business partner. So it's, it's definitely, um, 
you know, what I would say is it's good to network. Um, it's good to kind of let let what you're thinking about as far as your career known to folks so that, you know, to your manager, to anyone that might be interested in hearing you, because I think, you know, at some point, um, they'll recognize, right, and that you are interested in that, hey, you may be a good fit for this position, right? So even if you just have conversations, you know, during your one-on-ones with your manager or, um, you know, whatever it is when you're having your career conversations, it, it's good to let them know exactly what you're thinking about and what you really want in the future so they can definitely know and, and help you get there as well. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and our last question, do you have any other advice for our current CCRI students looking to join your field or even another area at BCBS? Internships are um, a great way to gain some sort of experience. Um, they're also a good way to really network with people in the industry. Um, even, you know, even if I'm, even if I get an internship, let's say in the sales or marketing department, but ultimately you may wanna do something with communications, right? There is an opportunity when you come into, um, when you come to Blue Cross, right? To kind of cross collaborate um, with other departments um, and other divisions and, and really maybe even do some shadowing at the other departments or the other divisions, right? As long as we put it out there and as long as we know, um, we do try our best to give you that um, to make sure that you're getting the most out of the internship as well. Um, we do have a good summer internship program where we have um, where we have maybe like bi-weekly or yeah, about bi-weekly we have a, a program where, you know, there's different sessions that we do, um, HR and across, you know, the organization with some other folks in the organization that they come in and they, you know, talk about what they're doing and everything else. But I think it's, it's perfectly fine to really just network, 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 um, and make sure you, when you do look at the internship that you're, going for, um, to try to make it, I guess, you know, I'm talking from my own experience, right? To really go for the internship that you really want, that you think that's what you're gonna wanna do like in two years, three years, whatever the case may be, right? Um, because that's gonna really help you with, um, you know, going for that entry level position at some point. Um, so that and what I would also say is always ask questions. Um, always ask, you know, why, why we're doing this, why we're doing that. Um, make sure you come prepared to the internship to kind of also give your point of view and to give some sort of, um, I guess, come with some strategies, right, with whatever you're being hand, whatever tasks you're being handed. Um, I think it's important that, you know, you're, Yes, you are the intern, but yes, you can also come with great ideas and, you know, make a difference in the team. Um, and people do notice that. So I think it's important to do that and really just take on as much as you can. Um, I think, you know, to get that experience is definitely valuable.